Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm just going to wait another uh, couple of seconds or so just to allow some other people to join in on the webinar. So we'll get started in just a second. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the intro um, to the intro uh, and donor engagement uh, webinar for this year's Richland Gives event. My name is Lisa. I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause, and we also have Mara here from the Richland County Foundation. So for those organizations that are new to Richland Gives or have participated before, you might be familiar with Mighty Cause. Mighty Cause has been around since 2006. We've helped uh, raise over $600 million with over 30,000 nonprofits, helping them reach their goals um, and their missions. Uh, we're one of the leading Giving Day technology platforms. And we try our best to create a platform that is really efficient and user-friendly for organizations to utilize for their giving day challenges. So I'm going to pass this over to Mora for a second. Hello. I wanted to welcome everyone to another year of Richland Gives and thank you for registering. Just a reminder, if you're on this call and your organization has not registered yet, uh, the deadline is October 31st, and you can simply do that by going to richlandgives.org. I did want to let you know that we made a few tweaks this year. Uh, the giving period will just be two weeks long, and Lisa will go through that later in this presentation, but uh, we felt that a shorter giving period would uh, be beneficial to both the staff at the local nonprofits as well as to our donors. We are going to do a leaderboard watch party. However, uh, due to COVID this year, we will do it on Facebook Live and also on the richlandgives.org website. Um, we know that COVID has devastated and decimated uh, operating revenues for local nonprofits, and we hope that. Uh, this year's Richland Gives will be even more beneficial to you, and it's going to take all of our energy and all of our enthusiasm to make this a great Richland Give. So welcome and thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank you so much, Mara. So we're going to be going over some technical aspects of the platform for new nonprofits. This is going to be a really good introduction into Mighty Cause and into the platform for returning organizations. This is going to be a refresher on key technical tools and features that you'll be able to utilize for your Richland Gives campaign. So as Maura noted uh, pre just a second ago, you first wanna make sure that your organization is registered for Richland Gives. That should always be your first step. Um, registration does end at the end of October, October 31st. So you still have some time to complete the registration form. If you're approved, you'll receive an email notification notifying that you've been approved. Uh, you can also check your registration status uh, in the overview section of your organization dashboard. As well, um, in addition to registering, you want to make sure that you're reviewing your administrators and approving or removing any um, administrators currently on your organization profile that need access to edit and manage your organization page. So something that you may notice that's a little bit different on the platform is the dashboard. We've actually updated it to make it more user-friendly and easier for organizations to navigate throughout the platform. The dashboard on your organization page is broken down into four key areas, which is your overview, your fundraising, reports, and settings. Your overview will provide you key metrics uh, such as information on donations year over year or how your campaigns are doing um, overall. 
it's, it's there to provide you quick stats on your organization overall. The fundraising section of your dashboard will allow you access to your organization profile, review all of the campaigns created for your organization, as well access tools such as matching grants and your checkout flow. The reports area will break down all of your donation reporting information. So we'll have a report for your overall donations, your offline donations, your recurring donations, a donor retention report, and a disbursement report. And then lastly, your settings, we'll break down all of the key settings that you'll need for your organization in regards to really the back end tools that you need, such as adding new administrators, updating or adding EFT, et cetera. And we'll break down a little bit more uh, some of those tools and features in each of these sections in a second. So after you've registered your nonprofit, uh, you wanna make sure that you're working on customizing your organization profile. This is where you're going to send your donors um, when they Richland Gives begins. Uh, this is going to be your main link. So you wanna make sure that you're customizing the look and feel of your profile page to meet your goal and mission this year. Uh, and you wanna think about, and we'll be going over this in the next webinar, you want to think about the story that you're telling this year to your donors. Um, what's changed about your nonprofit? There's obviously a lot of real world events that have happened um, this year. So how has that impacted your nonprofit? Why are you participating in Richland Gives? And how can a donation this year really impact your organization and help you achieve your goals and your mission? On your organization profile, uh, you also want to make sure that you are making sure that your organization profile matches your brand. So you want to add a logo and a background image on your organization profile. Uh, if you haven't uploaded a logo previously, uh, you want to make sure that it is a square image, so a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, and your background image will be horizontal. And this will allow, again, your organization to really pop out on the page. If you are a returning nonprofit, this is a really great opportunity to update uh, maybe your background image or review if you have any other updated logo or customized logo that someone on your team has created for this year's Richland Gives. Your theme color will allow you to also customize the color that's shown throughout your organization profile. And again, you want to make sure that you're matching this color to whatever you have on your website or to the brand colors you have for your nonprofit. And all of these tools are found, again, on your fundraising section under organization profile, and you'll see those editing options um, available to you there. As I mentioned just a second ago, um, telling a story is going to be really one of the most important aspects um, for your campaign, right? This is what or donors are going to be seeing and reading when they head to your organization profile. If you've participated in this before, as I mentioned, you wanna think about what new information you wanna to add to your nonprofit, but you also wanna consider thinking outside of the box. What else can you add to your about section? Maybe that means adding images or videos. Uh, if you're doing a Facebook Live, you actually have the ability of embedding it on your story. Maybe you are doing virtual happy hours that you wanna share with your donors. Um, add a custom tab and share that additional information. And again, as I also mentioned, you wanna make sure that you are updating donors on what's currently happening with your organization. How are you handling COVID-19? Where is your organization currently? Um, and what are your plans for 2021? At the bottom of your organization profile, this is where you're also able to add additional images and connect to social media. So you have the ability to connect with your Facebook gallery and your Instagram gallery. So if you are very active on those social platforms and you will be updating images or adding images on those social platforms, that's a really great opportunity to connect it with your profile so that those images that you're already uploading on Facebook or on Instagram are also going to be added to your organization profile without 
having you at it. Within the fundraising section of your organization dashboard, you'll be able to review any campaigns that you or any supporters for your organization have created. Um, so you'll be able to see on, under your campaigns all the fundraisers that any administrator has created. And under the peer-to-peer -peer tab, you can see any supporter or non-administrator has created. So you can really review um, any individual's uh, progress and as well you can actually uh, review their contact information and email those supporters through the platform. Something new that we've added to the campaign section is the fundraiser template. So for those of you that are planning on advertising peer-to-peer -peer fund fundraising, or that is one of the strategies that you're gonna be focusing on for this year, you can actually add a fundraiser template to the primary fundraise button on your organization profile. So for those of you um, that are not familiar, on your organization profile, there's two primary buttons on your page. There is a donate button, and then right next to it, there is a fundraise button. So this template allows you to add information onto a fundraiser if someone clicks that fundraise button and wants to build a fundraiser. So you're helping that individual build out their fundraising page. You're helping key, fill in key information such as maybe a goal amount, a description, an image, et cetera. Uh, this is just a really great helpful tool if you want to make the lives of your supporters a little bit easier and fill out some of that information already for them. A one template is allowed per or per organization on the starter plan. And again, you can find this in the fundraising and campaigns area of your organization dashboard. Once you've uh, filled in your fundraiser template, you've added your logo, your images, you've set up your theme color, you also want to make sure that you're updating or setting up metrics on your organization profile. Uh, the metrics tool can be found by selecting the pencil icon next to the metrics shown right underneath the title of your organization. So as you see here, there's a little pencil icon, and then you'll see edit goal or uh, the stats displayed. And so you can choose what you want included in those metrics. If you want amount raised to be shown, number of donors, if you want to include offline donations in those metrics that you're showing to donors. And most importantly, you want to make sure that you are setting the correct start time for those metrics. Uh, so you have the ability to set what date you want donations to start counting from. So you want to make sure that you're setting up for when donations um, begin for Richland Gives, which is November 16th at 7 a.m. If you have a fundraising goal, you can also set it here. And again, based off that start time, your thermometer will show your percentage to completion based off that start time that you've added. So if you are a returning nonprofit, this is definitely an important step that you wanna do in making sure that your metrics are updated for this year and don't have last year's dates uh, for Richland Gives. As you start receiving donations for your organization, as I mentioned when we spoke about the dashboard, uh, there is a report section. So you will receive all of your donor data in real time. If you are set up as an administrator for your nonprofit, you will receive an email notification letting you know that a donation has been made. On the donation report, you'll be able to see really quickly all of your donor information. If you need additional donor information, maybe you want to see what time the donor um, donated or maybe you're looking, want to see their a mailing address if you're collecting that. You want to make sure that you download the report um, and there will be a download report at the top of the uh, report. There's a download um, button at the very top. 
And when you download the Excel file, that's where you'll be able to see more comprehensive information. The report on the platform will provide you just quick and basic information on all of your donors. Additionally, if you want to review a disbursement breakdown, so you want to receive, want to review all of your disbursement details, you can do so through the disbursement report on your dashboard. Uh, you'll see a disbursement history when you go to your disbursement report, but if you select on the disbursement that you want to review further, you'll see a comprehensive breakdown there that will break down the total that you've received. If your organization is planning on or you will receive donations that were not made on the platform, so they were made off of the platform, maybe a donor gave you a check, maybe they donated on your you know, regular donate button on your website. If you would still like to include those on your page metrics, you can by using the offline donation tool. That is also found on your donation report. You simply select add offline donation and you can enter that offline donation so that it's being included in your page metrics. However, please note that only online donations will count towards leaderboards and prizes. So although you can include those for your own internal reporting, if you wanna display that on your page metrics, that's fine you will not see those donations included on the leaderboards. So that's just one thing to note when you are entering offline donations, you may see a discrepancy on your fundraising page metrics and your leaderboards because they will not be included on there. A really useful tool that we also have available in our report section is our donor retention report. Uh, this is going to be a really helpful a tool for any return, returning nonprofit, and it's going to be a helpful tool for new nonprofits, a part of Richland Gives. So your donor retention report will allow you to keep track of donors who donated last year, but have not yet donated this year. Uh, so when you're thinking about your email marketing strategy or who you're going to target this year, who would be the best people that you think would make a donation to your Richland Gives campaign, this would be the first group of people that I would target. The people that have donated previously to your nonprofit are the people that are most likely going to donate again to your nonprofit because they're already familiar with your organization. They've gone through that pain point of making a donation before, so they're more likely to give again. So if you head to your donor retention report under the report section on your dashboard, you can grab a list of all the donors that you donated last year for Richland Gives, and you can look up who you have not retained yet. And you can actually download this list of people, and then right there in five seconds, you have a list of people that you can immediately contact and reach out to. So I would highly recommend to um, check out the donor retention report. This could be really useful and helpful for your email marketing strategy or general just strategy as to who to contact this year for Richland Gives. The checkout flow section of your dashboard will allow you to also customize the checkout form that donors see when they decide to click donate and make a donation for your organization. The checkout steps tab within the checkout flow will allow you to add custom uh, suggested donation levels, add descriptions, and as well choose what data information that you want to collect during the checkout process, such as address information or phone numbers. If you've used the platform previously, you also want to make sure that you're coming back here and checking the donation levels and descriptions that you've set here. If you have new goals that you want to reach for your organization, you may want to come back here and just revisit what you've added and see if there's any updates that you need to make in regards to your donation levels and descriptions. The post checkout tab within the checkout flow will provide you all of the information in regards to what happens when the donation is processed. So once a donation is processed on the platform, a thank you page pops up for the donor. 
And you have the ability to actually add text and images for this thank you page. This is a really great opportunity to share with your donors, um, maybe a, another call to action and send them to maybe a particular place you want them to see more information about your organization. Perhaps you're asking them to subscribe to a newsletter or check out a certain blog on your website. You can include all that information within your thank you page. As well, uh, below the thank you page editing section, you also have the ability to customize the thank you message that appears on the receipt that we email out to donors. So you can add your own customized thank you language, again, provide any call to actions, et cetera, that you want to send to donors that will be included on that receipt. Both of these sections you can preview so you can see what that will look like for donors, what the thank you page will look like, and what the receipt will look like. So one of the fundraising strategies that's very common for giving day challenges is matching grants. And we have a tool available for nonprofits to be able to display and report the matching grants that they've received. Within the matching grants tool, you can set uh, different types of matches based off the type of match that you want to create, such as a dollar for a dollar match or a cumulative threshold match. One thing to note is that your match does not have to be paid through the platform. Um, if your grantor prefers to pay via check, that's perfectly fine. Again, our tool is a display and reporting tool. Um, however, please note that if your grantor is planning on paying their match offline, again, offline donations do not count towards the challenge, so that match value will not be counted towards leaderboards or prizes. So if you do want it to count towards leaderboards and prizes, you want to make sure that you coordinate with your grantor and have them make their donation online through the platform. If the grantor is planning on not having uh, making their donation online, you can still include that uh, information on your page metrics, though. And within the matching grants tool, you can also add and create other conditions. You can add a logo if you're working with a local business or a company. There's a lot of different options available in regards to matching grants. If you do have a matching grant available on the platform, uh, it will actually display at the bottom of your organization profile and it will be advertised to donors through the donate button as you see in the bottom of this slide. So this last uh, section of the dashboard, your settings, um, as you see here in the image, uh, we've made it much more easier to navigate this area by blocking off uh, the key segments of your settings. So within admins, that's where you're gonna be able to add or remove administrators. Within your general settings, this is where you can customize your URL, you can customize your social share information, uh, you can also hide or unhide your organization profile. Within organization info, you can update your display contact information. Um, so the address you have, the uh, DBA of your nonprofit, uh, your email address, website, and disbursement settings is where you can set up or update EFT information. If you need to update your legal mailing address or your legal um, legal name, you can do so in the organization info as well. Okay, now that we've gone through all of the technical aspects of the platform, so where everything is, how, what tools you should be looking for, we're gonna talk a little bit about donor engagement on the platform. So some things to consider for this year's Richland Gift. So you want to make sure that you're practicing social distancing and thinking, again, outside of the box in regards to what your organization can do. This is a really great opportunity to use, for example, live streaming like Facebook Live. 
to safely connect with your supporters and engage with your donors. Um, if you haven't really utilized digital communications before, this is a really great opportunity to do so now. And you wanna make sure that you ramp up your digital communications, utilize that donor retention report that I noted previously, and have a list of people that you wanna target. Uh, discuss how COVID-19 has affected your nonprofit and why supporting your nonprofit is especially important during these challenging times. So again, you want to think about what is the impact a donation can make for your organization right now and how that can help your nonprofit and help your nonprofit in 2021. So you want to make sure that you're delivering a message of hope and community and that you're really sharing with donors um, the impact that their donation can make for your nonprofit. So for those nonprofits that are a little hesitant about live streaming, what can I do? Uh, what am I going to say? There are a lot of really great and interesting things that nonprofits can say and do when it comes to live streaming, connecting with their supporters and their donors. This is a really great opportunity for interviews. Maybe donors or your supporters don't know who works at your nonprofit. And so maybe this is a great opportunity to share a little bit about your employees, your staff, your volunteers, or maybe interview someone on your board that also has a really great, makes an impact for your nonprofit. This is also a really great opportunity to do questions and answers or something that's very popular on Reddit in particular called Ask Me Anything, where donors can, or supporters can offer questions and you guys can answer about your nonprofit, about your particular, um, organ, you know, your nonprofit's industry, etc. You can also uh, provide impact stories where you're sharing about the impact of your organization, and this is a great opportunity to tie with some of the uh, marketing and communication you're doing around your organization. Uh, maybe there's a particular story that you're highlighting that maybe it's a really great opportunity to share a little bit more about that story. Or as I mentioned, you wanna highlight some people in your nonprofit that really do a lot and don't really get noticed often. Uh, this could be a really great opportunity to shout those people out, thank them for all the help they do, and uh, again, share some information to your supporters about those individuals. So there's a lot of great ideas that you can think about when it comes to connecting with your donors and your supporters. If you are still looking for some strategic help or any um, you know, templates for social media, for emails, please check out the Nonprofit Toolkit resources. We have a lot of great resources available there that will help guide you along um, you know, the path to when Richland Gives begins and also when it does begin. I mentioned in the beginning of this webinar that early donations begins on November 16th at 7 a.m. So that's when donors can start donating to your organization. And that's definitely something that you want to start advertising to donors that their donations can start November 16th um, and they can start helping your nonprofit then. Um, all donations are going to be processed immediately. So again, any donations that are made before November 16th, they're not going to count towards Richland Gives this year. As when you're thinking of some of the social media and um, email marketing strategies, uh, we've talked about live streaming, we talked about who to target, again, that donor retention report, but if you are an organization that has been able to secure a matching grant, that's a really great topic to cover in your communication. Promote your matching grant and make sure that you're telling donors when you have this matching grant, uh, recognizing maybe the donor that is providing the matching grant. Um, and the reason why organizations are so drawn to matching grants is because they create urgency and they share with donors the impact that their donation can make. Um, so definitely promote any tools in your arsenal that you have, such as a matching grant. Those are really great things to share and promote in your marketing. 
There are other hosts of different ways that people can support your organization outside of providing a matching grant. Um, so think about ways that you can engage supporters and receive, you know, have ambassadors for your organization. Um, and having ambassadors or having people support your organization can mean a lot of different things. That could be someone who's helping you with your social media if you're not so um, technologically savvy or savvy on social media. Maybe that's someone that is going to help you with your email marketing or create a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Uh, those are all really great opportunities for people to help out your organization for Rich Richland Gives. Um, as I just mentioned, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a very common strategy for giving day challenges and giving days. And peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is really great because it provides your supporters or your ambassadors the ability to tell their story about your organization. Why do they want to fundraise for your nonprofit? Why is, it, why is it important for them to help your organization? Those are all helpful tools. Um, those are all helpful reasons in regards to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And as well with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, why it's so beneficial for nonprofits is that you're reaching and acquiring new donors that you haven't been able to reach before. Um, so, for example, if maybe a board member of yours or, you know, a volunteer of yours sets up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser and fundraises on behalf of your organization, they're reaching out to their friends and family. Um, and you're being able to reach out to new donors that maybe have not heard of your nonprofit before or maybe have never made a donation to your nonprofit before. So you're really spreading your reach. And as well, when you have these sort of ambassadors or you are able to have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, you're also helping yourself out when it comes to strategy for leaderboards and winning any challenges or prizes. I talked a little bit already, well, I've talked a good amount about the donor retention report and that's how a really great tool to utilize on regards to who to reach out to. Um, when you're thinking about who to reach out to, you definitely want to be methodical and think out who to contact and what you want to contact them with. Um, so you have a list of your donor retention report, but maybe you also want to see how much that donor donated. And maybe you want to craft a specific message for donors that donated um, another amount. And you want to use strong language like make an impact again this year or um, please give again. Um, language that notifies these donors that they've made a donation before and they can continue to support your organization this year. Lastly, uh, you want to make sure that you're staying engaged overall with Richland Gives. So you want to make sure that you are setting yourself up throughout Richland Gives to um, have social media posts, send out emails. Um, so it's going to get a little bit crazy when it all starts. So you wanna make sure that you plan and schedule this all in advance and make sure that when you are sending out your emails and communications that you're providing them with a clear link to where they can donate or where they can help support your organization. If you are running into any questions or need any help, feel free to reach out to our support team. That's what we are here for, uh, support at mightycost.com. We also have a support form that will break down uh, any section of our dashboard. It'll really answer a lot of common questions that we receive. So also definitely recommend utilizing our support form. Um, and yes, contact us if you have any questions about anything we've discussed today. All right, I'm going to hold a couple of minutes for questions that anyone has about what we've gone through. Um, you can feel free to utilize the question section of the GoToWebinar control panel uh, and we'll answer those for you. Lisa, I have a... Uh, a topic that you might be able to discuss. Some organizations have fundraising pages set up on their behalf. Um, how can they figure out what fundraisers have been set up for them under Richland Gives? 
and how can they reset the metrics on a fundraising page? Yeah, so resetting the metrics on a fundraising page is really easy. Uh, you to do so, um, you if you you have to be the organizer of the fundraising page in order to reset those metrics. So whoever is the organizer of the page would need to do so. So whoever created the page, um, if they're if this person is no longer active or you need it to be transferred to you. Uh, please contact our support team and we can help transfer it to the correct user account. But once you're set up as the creator, the organizer, on the left-hand side dashboard of your fundraiser, you'll see settings. And within settings, there is a tool called metrics calculation where you can update that start date for when donations should be counted. Uh, so that's where you can update metrics on a fundraising page. Um, I hope that answered your question, Maura. Yes, it did. There are a couple outdated fundraising pages on the Richland Gives uh, website platform. So um, if you know who created those, if you can contact them and ask them to update it so it is current. Yes, and any organization administrator uh, within the campaign section of your dashboard, um, where I think I went through this in the webinar, you can see all the fundraisers that have been created for your nonprofit. So if you are an administrator, check out the dashboard and the campaign section. If there are outdated fundraisers, there is a tool that you can hide all of those. So there's like a little eyeball. You select the eyeball tool that hides the fundraisers uh, so you can you know make sure that those fundraisers are not going to be seen when people search your organization on the platform okay so there's a question about uh the cutoff time so how long will richland gives keep taking donations is there a cutoff time and date yes so donations will start on November 16th at 7 a.m. And then it will go until December 1st at 6 p.m. Uh, um, I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Yes, yeah, go ahead. 7 p.m. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that, 7 p.m. So you have until December 1st at 7 p.m. to receive donations on the platform. Okay, are there any other questions we can help answer for anyone? If not, that's perfectly fine. You can always ask us support at mydecause.com. Okay, I think there are no further questions so far. Uh, so again, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, we do have a second webinar on Tuesday, November 10th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's, going, it's called Let's Talk Strategy. And if you are looking for more tips uh, or information in regards to strategy, what types of strategy you should utilize in order to win prizes, please definitely register for the webinar and you can register on Richland Gives and you can go to the resource section and that's where you'll be able to register for the second webinar. Um, we'll also post this webinar immediately right when it's finished. So if you need a copy of the slide deck or you wanna rewatch it, you'll have that available to you as well. Okay, well, so since we don't have any questions here, I'm going to end it right here um thank you with everyone for participating and joining and um, um i hope you this was a little bit helpful for everyone all right thank you so much and have a great day bye